Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's April 23rd, 2014, and let's get straight into our top story tonight. New York Homeland Security encourages businesses to snitch on gun owners as potential terrorists. Some of the suspicious activity includes, but definitely is not limited to, the stockpiling of food and ammunition. And off the top of my head, I cannot think of a larger stockpile of ammunition than the Department of Homeland Security themselves. So let's give the DHS a call and see if they're aware of their own potential terrorist activity. Safe New York. Yes, is this the, uh, the see something, say something line? This is the terrorism tip line. Okay, I, I don't know if they're one and the same. Do I, do I need to talk to any particular person to report some? What, what kind of information are you looking to re relate? Well, sir, I, I'll tell you, um, I came across a report the other day, um, a report about people getting storable foods and uh, ammunition and so forth, and um, it's my understanding that DHS was considering that to be a suspicious activity. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. I've, I've never really done this kind of thing before. Um, and I, I just came became recently uh, became aware of a group that's storing up ammunition and uh, and things such as that sort and um, I, I don't really have too many particulars about the group I can't say you know it's it's Bob down this street or you know this guy or that guy but the thing uh, I also know about these guys in addition to um, having all this ammunition and so forth they also have targets of, uh, of children um, I'll tell you sir because you know I, I like to go out to the gun range and so forth and um, you go out there and you shoot, you know, normally people will shoot targets of the bad guy with the gun or they shoot a picture of a zombie, but this group is shooting targets of little children and it very much concerns me considering that they have all this bulk ammunition that they're shooting targets of, um, of children. Are you there, sir? I'm here. Do you want to tell me who this is? I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. Are you on a speakerphone, sir? Would you like to tell me who it is that is doing this? It is the Department of Homeland Security, sir. Oh, thank you for calling. Okay, are you aware? Are you aware of these things, sir? I want to put you back on speakerphone so you can continue talking. Go ahead. Okay, sir. Well, you know, it, it's very much uh, concerning to me that a group that's buying uh, bulk ammunition is also shooting targets of uh, of little children. Uh, were you were you aware of these things, sir? Is this new information to you? Were you aware of the of uh, new reports of shotgun shells being purchased by DHS in addition to uh, sniper ammunition? Well, sir, if uh, you have no other comment, I'll just say that I, I saw something and I'm saying something. And uh, do you do you have any anything to leave me with, sir? Okay, well, um, there's our response of DHS. Well, thank you for your time, sir. So I saw something, I said something, but the guy didn't seem uh, too cooperative, didn't want to speak to me pretty much at all. I told him, you know, there's some definitely some suspicious activity. They're planning to shoot children. They have all these bullets. They're molesting children at the airports. They have these mine-resistant vehicles, but he obviously didn't want to talk about that. So I encourage you to do the same. It doesn't have to be just in New York. If you see something, say something, and we'll talk more about seeing something and saying something in the state of New York here in just a little bit. But we'll move on now to the state of Louisiana, where they say they want to create a database for citizens who represent a, quote, risk to the state. Authorities in Louisiana are compiling a database of information on every citizen in order to identify people who are a, quote, risk to the state, as well as pinpointing future criminals, future criminals, in an effort to allow the state to intervene in that person's life. Now, I know we keep referencing this thing, but it's a very relevant film. Captain America. This is the story of Captain America, the new film. They have this big database so they can take out these potential threats, these potential targets before they have a chance pre-crime, just like they're doing in this situation. And they want to intervene in that person's life. I'm not sure exactly what that means in the movie. They wanted to kill you. In this situation, I'm not exactly sure what they plan to do, but they do plan to intervene in your life. And, you know, what kind of suspicious activity are they looking for? As you saw back in 2011, insane ban on cash transactions in Louisiana. So this is the cashless society. You go to a yard sale, you say, hey man, how much for that microwave? How much for that old PlayStation over there? You know, 20 bucks. You pull out 20 bucks. Guy says, hold up, man, I can't take this cash because they want to track all of our transactions with this money. So you can't pay us 
with this uh, with this cash money that you have in your hand, and that'll get you, uh, I guess, put on a watch list somewhere in the state of Louisiana because they want to be able to track everything you do. And people in the state of Louisiana need to stand up against these measures, just like people are standing up here in the state of Texas. Texas Attorney General Abbott to blame BLM. They're saying, hey. Come and take it if you want to come to our state and take our lands away because you see the situation, the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management out in Nevada. They're having the issue with Clive and Bundy, the rancher out there. They're trying to demonize the guy. They're trying to say he's some crazy militia prepper, you know, crazy guy who doesn't want to pay all his land fees. And Mr. Bundy, if you're not familiar with the situation, is grazing his cattle on land. And he says, hey, I admit that I don't own this land. I'll be happy to pay taxes to the state, but I'm not paying taxes to these feds who just come in and claim that they own this land with no real jurisdiction. And now they're trying to come here to the state of Texas. And Abbott said, I'm about ready to go to the Red River and raise a come and take it flag and tell the feds to stay out of Texas. And good uh, good job there, Mr. Abbott. You know, if you watch the show, you know I'm uh, not a fan of all things Abbott. I wasn't happy with his office uh, deeming the shooting of Larry Jackson in the back of the neck by the Austin Police Department to be a justifiable homicide. But I am happy to see that he's at least taking a stand on this, to stand against the, uh, the tyranny of the BLM and say, hey, we're not having this in our state. We don't even want that in Nevada, but you definitely are not gonna bring this here to the state of Texas. And somebody else has said, hey, I'm not gonna have this in my life. A woman has fought against the TSA and won victory for breast milk mom against TSA tyranny. Hermosa Beach resident Stacy Armado says she took on the U.S. government and won. A tentative settlement has been reached after she obtained this video from the TSA and posted it to YouTube. It shows agents detained her in a glass enclosure after she went through security screening carrying breast milk during a flight back to L.A. from Phoenix in 2010. My only options were to put it through the x-ray or to throw it in the trash. She sued the TSA, and last Friday, the two sides reached a tentative deal. And the lady in the video, she got about $75,000 out of the case, and most of that's going to go to attorney fees. But the real win here is not the financial. It is the fact that she stood up to the government and won, because they want you to think, whenever you encounter tyranny, don't say anything, sit down, shut up. As you recall, Miss USA was sexually assaulted by the TSA. She went to, uh, to an airport and was molested pretty much and after which she had a TSA agent approach her and say well honey wouldn't you rather be patted down than get on the plane and have something bad happen to you well what about something bad happening to you while you're in the airport expected to happen to you every single time you go on a flight because they deem you to be a potential threat you are guilty until proven innocent whenever time whenever you go to the airport it's not just when you go to the airports because people say well, well we'll starve we'll starve the the TSA we won't go to the airports they're in the train stations they have the Viper teams when uh, Josh Owens and I went to the Super Bowl uh, in uh, New Jersey, they had the TSA agents down there in the train stations checking people's bags to get on a train to go to the Super Bowl. You can't just avoid the airport and avoid these people. They're out on the streets. They're doing all type of things. They're trying to go to proms. We showed you those reports uh, a little while back. So these people are trying to be in every aspect of your lives. And just like I called DHS earlier today, you just have to get in their face and say, no, I'm not going to put up with this. And you can occasionally win these battles. Most of the time, you file a complaint, it goes into a black hole. Nothing ever happens. Or well, they put out some little, uh, oh, I'm sorry that our agent messed up, but we'll give them a promotion and just sit them over here in the corner type of apology. But, you know, occasionally you can win, so you have to keep fighting. You're not going to win every time, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try and one thing that they tried and did succeed, in the state of Georgia, you can now conceal carry pretty much anywhere. This is the governor of Georgia signing the Guns Everywhere bill into law. And this is House Bill 60, the Safe, the Safe Carry Protection Act, but also dubbed the Guns Everywhere bill by some, allows concealed carry permit holders to carry firearms into bars, schools, churches, and certain government buildings under certain circumstances. Now, I definitely don't think that guns and alcohol mix, but if you can handle your firearm appropriately, also, same thing when you go to school, you obviously don't want to cause any type of panic, but also if you uh, have the proper concealment and you're not putting anybody in a state of alarm, you're not carrying in a measure calculated to cause alarm, hey, you know, that it's, a, it's a free country, or at least it's supposed to be. And also, you can go into government buildings, as you can go into the government building here in the state of Texas, you can go into the state capitol, but if you step onto uh, the Texas capitol grounds, with your firearm exposed, Texas DPS will pretty much drag you to the ground and illegally arrest you. I've seen them do that three, four times personally. That's just the things that I've personally witnessed. But Georgia, they're going in the right direction. They're not like the state of New York, where they're saying that if your gun has certain cosmetic features, you cannot have it. Or in the state of California, where they're trying to ban firearms, they have ATF rating 
people like Aries Armor. It's just gun grabbing going on all around. But uh, definitely appreciate you guys in Georgia sticking up for your Second Amendment rights. And they say, well, you know, that means people are going to carry all the time. There are plenty of people who don't carry their guns. There are possible uh, many uh, potential gun owners, people who actually have guns currently, and they leave their guns at home, they leave their guns in the car, so that doesn't mean everybody in the state is going to be carrying. There's many irrational fears, many uh, anti-gun groups springing up to fight these type of measures, but yeah, our armed society is a polite society. I've been to many gun shows, I've been to many gun stores. Nobody ever got shot, nobody ever got hurt, and you bump into somebody say, excuse me, sir, excuse me, miss, you go on about your business and everybody is okay. But things are not all the way okay out in Russia because we have Larov. Russia will respond if eastern Ukraine is attacked. We are attacked, uh, we would certainly respond. Uh, if our interests, uh, legitimate interests, the interests of Russians have been attacked directly, like they were in South Ossetia, for example, I don't see any other way uh, but to respond in full accordance with international law. Russian citizens being attacked uh, is an attack against the Russian Federation. And that was the Russian foreign minister. Now, I'm definitely not here cheerleading for Russia. I'm not a Putin apologist, but I don't think we should be playing Team America World Police uh, doing what we see fit uh, in involving ourselves in foreign affairs, especially against uh, a country so powerful as Russia. That's not just us. It goes for anybody. So, you know, I'm not here saying Russia is great, but I don't think everything we do here in the States is great. We have drones. We have wiretapping. We're running guns into Mexico. We're not holding people accountable for Benghazi. So we're not uh, exactly high up on the social scale either. Now, let's talk about some other things going on in the world. We'll continue going around to other places. This time, we'll go to the Philippines. Obama not welcome. Filipinos protest presidential visit. Police armed with shields and with fire hoses clashed with more than 100 left-wing activists, and they rallied at the U.S. Embassy in Manila, and they said they don't want Obama coming because they're sure that the new pact that he's pushing would increase American military presence in the Philippines. So uh, they attacked him with water hoses, which is, I guess, the non-lethal response of, you know, well, we're not killing these people, so using water hoses is okay, just like they did here during the civil rights movement. But now they say, or at least here in the States, they're not going to use the water hoses. What they'll do, they'll pepper spray you, just like we saw at UC Berkeley. They just walk around, well, we're not killing these people, so that's fine. We're not sticking dogs on them. Or they use the tasers. That's the, uh, the non-lethal choice, even though we've seen people die from tasers right here in the city of Austin or right outside the city of Austin. A child was tased in a school for breaking up a fight, fell down, busted his head, and everybody's shrugging their shoulders like they don't understand how or why this happened. Also, we've seen people get tased for having seizures, not got tased and then went into a seizure. They were currently having a seizure, having diabetic shock, and then got tased. So there's a lot of tyranny, a lot of things going on in all these, uh, these police forces. I understand you have to uh, minimize these situations the best you can, but turning water hoses on people I don't think is the best way to have yourself shine in the social scene. And it's not just there. We also see things going on in the Rio de Janeiro. And it says the riots turn deadly as protesters erupt over killing a professional TV dancer in City Slum. City Slum is their headline. I understand a lot of people don't like them calling that area a slum. But regardless, a 12-year-old boy has been injured in the protest, according to local media. And it says the unrest began after the body of a professional dancer, Douglas Raphael, was found dead on Tuesday morning. Residents blaming the police for his death. Just like we talked about in our last story, there's plenty of police brutality to go around. And when people see this violence from the police, they get angry and they clash back. Now, I'm not advocating any type of violence against the, against the police. But when you have situations where the police are proactively assaulting you, you do have a right and a duty to defend yourself. Once again, I said that in a defensive measure, don't go out and just start shooting cops just for the fun of it. But if you have a situation when they attack you, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect your family. And that's what's going on here in, uh, in Rio de Janeiro. Now, are there other people acting on their own accord with their own agendas? I'm sure there are. You always have people with their personal agendas. You also have provocateurs you have to be concerned about. But for the most part, they say, you know, they're just clashing back against the police brutality that is all too prevalent, not just here in the United States, but all around the globe. And that's very evident right now in the state of New York, which we have hashtag my NYPD. Now, this is a hashtag that was started by the NYPD to give themselves a, a friendly face, I guess you would say. People were taking happy selfies, and or I guess that was the desired effect. But then you actually go to the hashtag My NYPD. You can go to various articles as well. And you see all these photos of people being brutalized by the NYPD, which I'm very happy.